What's going on guys? Welcome to Computer Vision with Python. In this video, we're going to be continuing from where we uh, left off last time. So last time we trained a model in TensorFlow using transfer learning. So transfer learning was based off the inception module. So after training a module, you want to apply it. So that's pretty much what inference is. You start applying it on images it hasn't seen. So in our case, anytime an image comes in, we want it to be able to differentiate if it's a fish or not fish. So training was pretty simple and now what we're going to do is we're going to use some scripts that are already located within the uh, TensorFlow repository and we're going to use that for inference. So if we go back to TensorFlow, so last time I had told you guys to get TensorFlow uh, using git, so git clone TensorFlow and so we're going to go within TensorFlow. As you can see, I'm already within um, the main directory TensorFlow. So there's another subdirectory TensorFlow, so we're going to go into that and what we want to do is go into examples. All right, so last time we used image retraining. As you can see, I had retrain YouTube, which I made a couple of modifications to the original retrain script. So it's within the same subdirectory of examples, but instead of going back into image retraining, what we're going to do is go into label image. So we're going to label image, and here we can see um, this is the original script label image and we're going to go into that and we'll take a look at the script. Okay. All right, so let's, uh, it's not that long of a script. It's only uh, 133 lines. So let's just take a look at what's going on so we get a better idea. The first thing is all these are just imports. Uh, the second thing that we should look into is called a uh, load graph. So let me see. All right, here. So last time we trained a model Okay, hopefully you guys remember everything, but well, after training a model, we got this uh, output graph PB. Okay, so this PB is a frozen graph. And what we have to do is we sort of have to get that graph into our, into our script. We have to import the graph and the weights into our script. And the way we do that is uh, using this code. So this is the sort of the typical way of, a typical way of importing a graph into our script. So the model file, is the output graph.pb and all it does is it um, returns a graph. So this is the graph that we will be using in our scripts. Basically what it's doing is it's unfreezing the graph into our script so we can use this graph instead of creating construction, constructing a new graph and we'll be using the weights from the graph itself. So here's a, a couple of other things that um, you guys should be aware of. There's another function here and this is um, read tensor from image file. So Essentially, a lot of these models, like Inception model, they require a, a certain image size. So in the last video, everything was taken care of us by the script. The script took the images, it divided them um, up into three different categories, the validation, the test, and the training set, and it automatically uh, also resized the images for us. You know, so in this case, since we're, we're taking a close look at the code, we're going, to, we're going to see exactly how it does that. And after taking the image, what it also did was it uh, normalized it. So it took the average pixel of I think all the images and then it subtracted each pixel from the average pixel, the mean pixel, and then divided it by I think the standard deviation. So there's a there's a formula that they use to normalize it. And what I mean by normalize is it just sort of shrinking into uh, smaller values because if you have large values and you start doing all the matrix multiplications, you get enormous values. And sometimes you'll get uh, an overflow, um, but pretty much you're gonna be dealing with digits that are way too large and you're gonna run into some errors. So what you do is we input the image. So what this uh, read TensorFlow image file, essentially what it's doing is it's gonna take the image, find out what its extension is, and then uh, use some uh, decoding. So the decoding is actually built in TensorFlow functions. It'll take an image and it'll decode it and it'll turn it into an, an array. So it'll extract the values. And then after that, what it's going to do is it's gonna resize the image, as you can see, resize. This, uh, yeah, so this cast is actually just, it's converting the, um, the type, the data type of the array. So instead of being a unsigned int eight, it's turning it into a TF uh, tensorflow float. So it's just changing the data type for uh, calculation purposes. But uh, you don't have to worry too much about this. Um, the main thing is that you, you should know that it's everything is resized and then it's normalized. So essentially, what this that's what this code is doing. Read tensor from image files is just resizing and normalizing the image. Okay. So the next one is uh, load labels. So this is essentially going to load the label files 
uh, these, the labels.txt. So as you remember, um, it's fish and not fish. So it's going to load these labels so that after we run the model for inference, it's going to be able to output either fish or not fish. So that's why it's loading the uh, labels. Okay, so yeah, you don't have to worry too much about that as well. Now here is, um, within this script, they have a built-in example. Unfortunately, this example does not work with our case. They're using a graph, a built-in graph, um, Inception from 2016. This version is a little different from the version we trained on. So I'm not really sure if the, the model we trained on is from before 2016 or after 2016, but the layers, you have the input and output layer, the names of the layers are a little different. So we can't use this, uh, these input and output layers for the model we trained on. So this inception that they've included, um, this model file, uh, the inception has different names for their layers as opposed to the ones we trained on. So I had to do a little digging to find out what the names were um, so that we can apply uh, this script to our model. Uh, this, these lines of code is just an example using um, this frozen PB, uh, this label file, and uh, this image. So we're not gonna deal with this. We have our uh, own image, our own PB, and our own text file. So these are just parse arguments. Hopefully you guys know arg parse. What this does is just allow you to enter everything through the command line. So, and if you take a look here at these uh, if statements, all these are optional. So if args.graph, uh, model file will be this args.graph. So args.graph is essentially this, args.graph. Args.image is this, args.labels is this, args.input height and input width and, and so on. So essentially what this portion is doing is it's saying that if you didn't input anything through the command line, it's going to use the, uh, the default values, which are these, model file. So you could actually change these to the default values that you want to use. So if you have a specific image, specific model file, specific input output layer, which we'll go over, um, you could have those as a default and not enter um, input anything through the command line. These are all optional, but you could enter everything through command line, which is what we're going to do. And then what we do is we load the graph. So remember, all we're doing is load graph model file. So this loads the graph, we have a graph, and now T is going to be the image that we sort of resize and normalize and save it to the variable T. So the input name and output name are essentially the input layer with import. Now, I don't think uh, we need these import portions. I'm going to have to just uh, check that, but Essentially what we're doing is we're getting the operation by name. So this get operation by name is going to get the input layer and the output layer. And I'll show you guys um, exactly what that is doing. So after we get those, we're essentially going to run, sys.run the output layer. So this might be a little confusing if you're not familiar with TensorFlow, but I don't want you to worry too much about that right now because we're, we're essentially using the default script that's included within TensorFlow. So we just wanna make a couple of modifications so that it runs on our script. So we're going to be getting the results and then this top uh, top K, what it does is it it's going to sort the results from highest to lowest. The highest percentage uh, label is going to be displayed first and then the next highest and so on. So sorting the first five and it's sorting them by highest to lowest. So that's pretty much the gist of it, okay. All right, so a couple of things, let's see. The first thing we want to do is I want to show you guys how we can look at the different operations of the graph. So this is probably the most confusing part of the entire video, but we have to get the input and the output layers. So the default input and output layers, if we go back and look here, um, here the input layer is called input and the output layer is called input uh, predictions reshape one. But this was done on a different inception module. So this is 2016, so they might have changed the name of the layers. So what we need to do is we need to look at the layers again and figure out where our input and output is. Now, this is going to be a little confusing, but hopefully get some sort of intuition. So the code to actually get a list of all the uh, layers or all the operations is this. So for op in tf.getDefaultGraph.getOperations. So tf.getDefaultGraph.getOperations, um, you print the op values. So for op in tf.getDefaultGraph, you put, so this will, display all the operations of the nodes within our graph. So the first thing we want to do is load the graph. So what I did was, uh, this is a different script. I'm just using uh, create graph, pretty much the same function as the uh, function here, which was, uh, let me see here, load graph. So essentially what we're doing is load, loading the graph 
and I gave the directory, which is output.graph.pb. So we're going to uh, get the graph directory. We're going to create the graph, and then we're going to uh, run this, these couple of lines. And what this is going to do is going to print out all of the operations. So as you can see, there's a lot of layers. Inception is a very big model. So the two things we need to know are uh, the output. So the output is given by the softmax. So remember, softmax is going to display everything in probabilities. This is going to be the final layer, which is called final result. So we have final result as the final layer. And then the next thing we want to do is find the input layer. So remember, in our case, our function is taking the images, resizing it, doing all the normal normalization. In, in reality, with uh, the inception module, um, all of this is done actually in the module. So we can't use the first node. So let me just show you what I mean. So if you look at our inception module, essentially what these two are doing is uh, decoding the uh, JPEG into an array. And it's casting it into a float. Um, this is expanding the dims. So these are all operations that if we go back and look at our, our function, so it's essentially doing the same thing. Uh, you cast, then you expand the dims, then you uh, resize by linear. So all of these first few nodes are doing essentially the same thing that we've already done. So we don't need all this. So we don't need to input our image into any of these nodes. Because if we put our image into any of these nodes, all these calculations are going to happen again. Yeah, this, so this might be a little confusing to explain, but all of these um, are just uh, resizing and normalizing the image. So this is uh, resizing the image, and this is the normalization. You, you subtract and then you uh, multiply or divide by the, I got one over the standard deviation and, and this is the output we get. So this is going to be our input. Um, this tensor is going to be our input, our image input. So as you can see, this is the last um, operation in all of this resizing and uh, normalizing. Because if you look at the next one, uh, the next tensor or operation, it's, um, it's dealing with the convolutional parameters or the uh, convolutional layer. So this output is where we want to feed our, our image into because we're actually taking care of all of these. We're taking care of all these with our function. This output should be the same. The output of mull uh, should be the same as our image, which is resized and normalized. So what we want to do is we want to insert our image, normalized and resized image, into this uh, tensor variable. We're just going to be straight inputting our values into here. Um, so hopefully that's not too confusing. I know it's, it's a little difficult to explain, but hopefully you guys get the gist of it. So we're going to be using this as our input and the output that we're interested in is this final result. And we're going to be running this, the final result. So we have an input and when we run this, it forces it to go through all these layers and give a final result. So I've actually set up everything beforehand. Let me see. Um, so this is our input layer is going to be mole and our output layer is going to be a final result. Um, let's just go back. Okay. Okay. So if you look at this, um, so we have all these parse arguments, right? So we're going to feed in an image. We're going to feed in a graph. We're going to feed in the labels and we're going to feed in the input and output. Uh, we don't really need to worry about this too much. So we have the image, we have the graph, we have the labels and we have the input and output layer. So those are going to be our parameters. And let's just take a look. Okay, so so we're going to be running this script, which is TensorFlow ex uh, examples, label image, and then label image.py. So this is the script, uh, this is this script. Then we have our image, which, okay, so this is the image. I don't know if you guys can see the name, but it's all these weird symbols and characters, letters, and then copy. So this is the image we're going to use. All right. So that's the image. The graph, of course, is the output graph.pb, which I showed you guys earlier that we trained. And this is what the, this was the output that we got. So we're going to be using this graph. And the labels are, of course, once again, labels.txt. So these are the labels. Um, fish and not fish. OK. And let me just go back to this, untitled. OK, so then we have the input equals layer, and the output equals final result. Now, from for my test, this seems to be working perfectly. I had a couple of reservations um, because the name our operation is final result. But if you look at the script, they have this uh, import. So the input name is import plus input layer. So I'm not really sure exactly what this import is because the name of our operation is just final result. So, so here, 
our input layer is the name of the input layer and the name of the output layer. So the name of the input and output is um, mul is the input and output is the final result. So we have mul and final result. So for some reason, it's taking that and adding this import um, to it. I'm not sure if we need this import or not. You guys could play around with it, but it seems to be working with this import statement. So it takes our input layer and it adds this and converts that into an input name. And then it gets the operation by the input name, output name. So usually what I do is I usually get uh, get tensor by name. Um, that's what I was using in the old uh, label image.py. This is actually an updated label image.py. So they made a lot of different changes. So I'm not really sure uh, what this import, uh, if this import is necessary, but in our case, it seems to be working. So we'll just leave it as it is right now. Yeah, so let's just take a look at what's going on. So we have graph that get operation by name. So essentially we're using the name. Uh, we have the input name, output name. And what's happening is we have the input layer, output layer, and then we're adding these imports to it and we're getting these names. So once we get the names, um, all we're doing is we're running. Remember, we have to run the output. And if, if you guys are familiar with TensorFlow, uh, inputs are, are placeholders. So this input operation dot output zero is actually a placeholder and we feed it T, which is actually the, the image that's resized. So yeah, so if you guys take a look at some of the um, tutorials, you always have a placeholder and then you, you feed values to the placeholder. So our, our placeholder is this input operations output zero and we're going to feed it T, which is the image that's resized and normalized, and we're going to feed it into this node, op input operations outputs zero. And then the result squeeze is just to, uh, it's just uh, getting rid of one of the dimensions. So it's just, uh, it's displayed a little nicer. And then we uh, sort our, our, our results. And in this case, we don't have top five, we only have two. So it's just gonna display the two in a descending order and um, it's going to print the label for i in top k it's going to print the label so this is just a uh, code to display everything properly um, you don't have to worry about this too much but essentially it's just displaying the top five so hopefully that wasn't too bad so what i'm going to do is i'm going to run this code um let's see uh where'd it go okay here we go so this is the code i'm going to grab this let's open cmd CMD. Okay, so what I'm going to do is run this, and it's going to run in that specific image. Um, don't worry about all this. Okay, so the important thing to note is here we go. So it's classifying a fish with 98%, and it's classifying it not fish with only 0.01%. So it's it's pretty confident that it's a fish. The image in question once again is. Uh, this image. Now let's let's try it on a different image. Okay, so let's try it on this image. So this one is a fish, right? All right. So let's see if it classifies it as a fish. So we'll get the properties, security. I'll just copy the link. Okay, and we'll go back here. And all we're going to do is uh, change the image. Okay, we'll change the image. Um, all right. So let's just copy this and we're going to again. Okay, now let's just run this again. So now we're trying a different image. Let's see what a classifier. Okay, once again, so we got a fish 90% and a not fish 9%. So it's pretty confident it's a fish. All right, um, let's try a different image. So this, let me see what this is. Okay, all right, so this is a tricky one. I don't know if this will classify it properly. So hopefully it will classify it as not fish into that scuba diver image. We're going to copy this. All right, so we're gonna bring back our command prompt. Okay, all right, there we go. And we're going to run this as well with the new image. Let's see what our classifier predicts. All right, so surprisingly, it predicts this as a not fish with 81% accuracy. And uh, it's 18% accuracy with fish. So it's pretty confident that it's uh, it's an outfit. So I'm, I'm actually surprised that it got that. Okay, so that's the gist of how you can classify, um, uh, how you can use inference to classify whether it's a fish or not fish. Okay, so hopefully that was useful. So in the next video, I might go into how you can get some of these images and image transformation. So I think I might focus on that in the next video. I'm not really sure yet. But hopefully um, this video was not too confusing. If it is, I might redo some parts just so you guys get a clear idea of how everything, everything works. All right, so I will see you guys in the next video.